Hi everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm here to take you along as we move to week two of the Baby GAPS Diet. I will have week one linked down below in case you wanna go back and watch that. But today we're ready to move on into week two of the Baby Gaps Diet for introducing solids to babies Gaps style. So Dr. Natasha says that in the second week, you should go ahead and continue with the previous foods, which were the homemade meat stock and then the fresh pressed carrot juice between meals and just gradually increasing those daily amounts. So that's exactly what we did. I just let him kind of dictate the amount of meat stock that he wants. I'm still doing it once a day and then just kind of increasing as he wants more. I still nurse all the rest of the time like normal on demand. This is just like filling in as his body needs more nutrition than that. I don't give the meat stock before every single nursing session. I'm just starting with one meal a day and then increasing the amount for that one meal. And then later on, I will add a second and then third meal as he's ready. So that's how I do it. So the very next thing that we do now that we're in week two is to start adding probiotic foods to the meat stock. So Dr. Natasha recommends two different things. Whey from homemade raw milk yogurt and then the liquid or brine from homemade sauerkraut. I'm going to go ahead and start with the whey and I am going to be using kefir whey. I did consult with a GAPS practitioner first to make sure that that would be okay rather than starting with yogurt. I do recommend that most people go ahead and start with yogurt like Dr. Natasha says, yogurt whey, just because yogurt is more gentle than kefir. Kefir is a lot more powerful and you wanna make sure that you're not triggering a bunch of die off. The reason why I wanted to go with kefir is because I've already been populating my body with it before he nurses, so he's already been exposed to it lots and lots of times. And like I said, I double checked with a GAPS practitioner too, just to bounce it off of her, make sure that that would be a good idea. So I'm gonna start really, really slow. I'm going to start with just a little bit, like a few drops of whey in his meat stock. And that's because he's still not having a huge amount of meat stock at this point. And also you wanna start anything new, especially fermented foods very slowly to give the body a chance to acclimate and not cause a bunch of die off that could be uncomfortable. Another really important thing that I always do too is that I only add one thing at a time, one new thing each day. So for example, starting into week two here, I'm not gonna start adding probiotic liquid to the meat stock and introduced the cooked vegetable puree in the same day. I'm gonna do one and then the other. So I'm gonna be adding the liquid probiotic to the meat stock today and then we'll see how that goes. And then if everything seems good, then we'll continue that tomorrow and then also add the vegetable puree tomorrow. So I'm gonna start by just adding just a little dribble, like a few drops of whey into his meat stock and then watch carefully, make sure it's not too much and gradually, very, very slowly increase that amount. Then once I feel like that's going well, I'll try introducing the brine from sauerkraut and I'm gonna do that the same way, just like a drop or two and watch and see how he does, make sure it's not too much. And only then when I make sure he's doing well with that amount, I will very, very slowly increase. And then after I've introduced both, then I will alternate. Some days I'll add the whey and then sometimes I'll add the sauerkraut brine. Also, Dr. Natasha recommends doing the sensitivity test. That was where you put a little bit on the inside of their wrist and let it dry at bedtime and let that sit there and make sure that there's no angry red reaction on their skin before introducing it to them. So I'll do that with the whey and then also the sauerkraut liquid separately before giving them to him in the meat stock. And then she says once they're doing well with the whey, you can move to the actual yogurt itself. So in our case, that will be the kefir itself. So once that's going well, then I'll start adding that to his food that he's going to have, which we're gonna talk about in just a second. I don't add that to the meat stock. I stick with the liquids like the whey or the sauerkraut brine when I'm adding it to the meat stock. So then the next thing that we add in week two is going to be some pureed cooked vegetables in meat stock. So she says to cook these in that same meat stock that you made for the baby. 
and you're gonna to wanna to cook them very, very soft. You're gonna to stick to vegetables that are not starchy, so no sweet potatoes or yams or potatoes or anything like that. Her recommended vegetables are carrots, squashes, leeks, onions, garlic, broccoli, cauliflower. She says to peel and de-seed any of those. So the ones that I'm gonna start with for him are carrots and onion. I'm gonna make a combination of carrots and onion. So what I usually do is I'll make a decent amount of one kind and then I will freeze a lot of it into ice cube trays and that way I can easily take out just a small amount at a time. And then I will do a few different varieties. I'll have like the carrots and onions that I'll start with and then I'll have different little amounts in ice cube trays of those I can pull out as I want to and then I'll do like some cauliflower and onion and then I'll just try different ones so that that way he has a little bit of variety. She says it's very important to start with it very thin so it's gonna be a lot of meat stock with just a little bit of the vegetables added to it and then you're gonna puree the vegetables super well so they're very, very smooth in either a blender or with a handheld blender, just make sure they're very well blended. And she has, says that when you cook them, make sure they're cooked very, very soft. And then over time, she says to make it a little bit thicker, so add more of the vegetables to the meat stock so it's a thicker puree for them. And then she says that you want to add some natural fat too, starting off with just a little bit, like for example, five drops of cod liver oil, some tallow, some ghee that you make. She says you can use unsalted butter, lard, chicken fat, any of those. She says it's a good idea to rotate through using different fats on different days so that they get a nice variety. So she says cool it down to like skin temperature and then stir in some fat and then feed it to them. She says to start with two to four teaspoons of the puree and for us that's maybe not even that much at first like the first time that he tries it but that's kind of a good goal amount at first and then once he's doing well with that then slowly increase as he wants it okay i hope that you enjoyed that and found that helpful let me know if you have any questions down below make sure to stay tuned for week three when we move on to that also remember that i have a blog post with all of the weeks for this whole process in one place so it's really easy to just jump back and remember what am I supposed to be doing when so I'll have that link down below as soon as I have that up so be sure and check out that description box if you did like this video give it a thumbs up that helps it reach more people also consider sharing it with anybody that you think might find it helpful and if you're new to my channel please hit that subscribe button I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living thanks so much for watching see you next time bye